Has this ever happened to you? If so, great news. This analysis video will focus on all things muzzle velocity. Oh, good kill, dude. Leading and range combat. So that you never end up in a situation like this again. This is the ultimate muzzle velocity guide. Kung Fu. Ranging from the humble Derringer to the lightning fast Spitzer Ammo Label, almost every gun and ammo type has a unique muzzle velocity, which greatly influences your effectiveness in ranged combat. Muzzle velocity determines how long it takes for your bullet to reach its target. As an example, a gun with a muzzle velocity of 400 meters per second will take half a second to hit a target that is 200 meters away. The equation to calculate the time for a bullet to reach your target is fairly straightforward. Simply divide the range of your target by your muzzle velocity. Here's a spreadsheet containing the time to reach a target for common muzzle velocities, out to 300 meters. Do note that while there is bullet travel time in this game, bullets are not affected by gravity, and will maintain a straight course to their target. Also keep in mind that bullets are not affected by air resistance or the relative motion of the hunter. For this video at least, I won't have to break out the calculus. So now that we're on the same page about muzzle velocity, and how different bullets travel at different speeds, let's talk about leading your target. Leading your target is the idea that at range, if your target is moving, you should be aiming not where they are, but where they will be, to account for the muzzle velocity of the gun. The metric we will use when discussing lead will be the number of head links in front of your target's direction of movement. For example, this wind field at 100 meters requires three heads of lead. We can calculate how many head links are required to lead our target by dividing the time it takes for a bullet to reach its target at range by the time it takes for the head to completely move across the crosshair. Performing this calculation gives us the number of head links required to lead our target. He's tagged twice. He's tagged three times. On screen now are lead value spreadsheets for shooting at a strafing hunter and a sprinting hunter running perpendicular to you. The values are the number of head links in front of the target required to hit their head. Starting at the green with one head of lead, each color represents another head length of lead, out to six heads. Feel free to pause here if you'd like. Remember that because not every shot needs to hit the head dead center, your tolerance for leading is plus or minus half of one head length. So sure, now you know the value of how many head links to lead your target, but what does that actually look like in game? On screen now is the leading profile for the stock wind field at 100 meters. This leading profile includes the three most common stances you'll be expected to lead in combat. Sprinting perpendicular to you, strafing perpendicular to you, and sprinting at a 45 degree angle towards you. Of course, these aren't the only ways enemies will approach you, but these will give you a good baseline to tailor your lead. One thing you'll notice is that the strafe lead is nearly identical to the lead required for target sprinting at 45 degrees. This is because a strafing hunter is moving at 3 meters per second, and the hunter running at 45 degrees is effectively running at 3.5 meters per second, perpendicular to your aim. I've included the data for hunters moving at 45 degrees, but keep in mind that, for the most part, you should treat them as roughly the same. Do note that while most of my lead profiles are done using scopes, the number of head links required to lead stays constant, no matter what kind of optics you are using, as the head size changes proportionally. If you're a visual learner like me, I've included all of the lead profiles that the members of my Discord hand-tested for me at the very end of this video. Feel free to skip to this timestamp or to a chapter for a specific gun that you'd like to see. Additionally, there is an infographic linked in the description that also contains those lead profiles, as well as a link to all the spreadsheets utilized in this video. I would like to stress that while these images are helpful starting points in determining how to lead your target, they are no substitute for in-game practice. A recommendation I have for improving your ability to lead targets is to convince a couple of your friends to join a session in the shooting range and skirmish with each other at different ranges.
What about the range where you don't need to lead your targets at all? This one is a bit tricky to determine. What I settled on is when you need a lead of less than half of a head on a sprinting hunter. But you could also use a full head length as your cutoff point if you're a bit more generous. Or if you want it to be really technical, quarter head lengths would be the true range where a gun requires no lead whatsoever. We've talked a lot about how to lead your target at specific ranges, but how do you know what range your target is at? Since our pings don't have range finders in the live servers, we need to be creative in determining our range to our target. The ping in game is a constant size no matter what range we are at, and we can use that to our advantage. As you can see here using iron sights, this target dummy is two pings tall at 50 meters, one ping tall at 100 meters, and half a ping tall at 150 meters. You can utilize this to make on-the-fly decisions about the range of your target. The relationship between the size of the ping and the hunter changes depending on your FOV and the magnification of the scope that you're using. Refer to this chart, pick out your FOV, and determine what kind of relationship the size of the ping has to hunters at different ranges. Of course, this isn't an exact science, but it's much better than blindly guessing, and is an excellent starting point for learning how to range find effectively. Now let's talk about the opportunity cost of using certain ammo types. The most obvious discussion is Spitzer ammo versus regular long ammo. Spitzer's muzzle velocity at 800 meters per second is really fast, but at what range is that actually going to matter compared to long ammo's respectable 600 meters per second? The no lead range for Spitzer ammo is approximately 15 meters, while long ammo stops requiring lead under 12 and a half meters. This means that at 12 and a half meters, Spitzer ammo is outclassed completely by long ammo. From 15 meters to 50 meters, the muzzle velocities are so similar that you shouldn't expect more than half a head length difference between the two ammo types. At ranges where Spitzer really starts to shine. Out to 100 meters, expect Spitzer to perform approximately one head better than standard long ammo, and approximately two head lengths better by 250 meters. In a similar vein, let's compare Winfield High Velocity Ammo to Winfield FMJ Ammo. Both of these ammo types are strong picks in their own right, but at what range do you start to appreciate the muzzle velocity increase of the high velocity ammo over the increased penetration of FMJ ammo? By 40 meters, FMJ already requires one more head of lead over high velocity, and by 100 meters, it's up to three heads of lead difference between the two. FMJ is a very powerful ammo type on the wind field, especially with levering, but know that you are significantly harming your ranged effectiveness when giving up high velocity ammo. The last comparison I'll make is the new army's muzzle velocity with and without FMJ, but this will broadly apply to all pistols. I had plenty of people in the comments of my bullet penetration guide, link in the top right, that disagreed with my decision to always put FMJ on the new army pistol because it makes the muzzle velocity too slow. However, the bullet velocity goes from 230 to 200 meters per second, a paltry 30 meters per second decrease. Are you really going to notice this difference while using your pistol inside of the range it's suited for? You decide. Probably not. If you stuck around this far, it really means a lot to me. These videos are admittedly dense, but I try my best to give you all the important information to improve your game without wasting your time. If you did make it this far, leave a comment telling me if you thought this video was helpful. I know for me personally, I realized that I was leading too much and dialed back my leading a little bit. My next couple of videos will be more laid back. This video turned out to be much more testing and work than I ever could have planned for, and I need a break. Expect a more fun video next week, and then if you've seen my community post, you'll know that I've got something really out there in the works. Stay tuned for that. If you aren't tired of my voice yet, and you're watching this video the day it came out, there's also a good chance I'm live on Twitch right now. Come swing by and say hello. I'd love to see you there. Once again, the rest of my video will play out showing all the lead profiles that I collected, and you can also find this information in the description. Until next time, take care. One of your bullets almost hit me, by the way. Tagged. He's in. White shirt. I don't know who else is up. She's on fire. Wait, let her burn, let her burn, let her burn.
Just let her burn. <laughs> I flashed her. She's still burning. <laughs> Cook! She's still burning. She's still burning. Oh my gosh, she's still on fire. <laughs> GG's. While the rest of these lead profiles play out, I'd like to individually shout out all the users of my Discord that helps me gather this footage. In no particular order, shout outs to Atheist, Jungle, DH Renegade, himself, C3, Wolfmary X, Banani, Jim underscore Boy, God of Meth, Wet Socks, John Townsend, Twisty, Benji the NG, Squid, Rooster, I Flex Nuts, Fat Dude, Practical Problems, Arellis, Specific Disc 568, Meepsire, Seeker 12789, and last but not least, Spheral Bra, who I could rely on to double check my testing.